Welcome back to another episode of The Pickle Pulse. I am your host, Brian Green, and as always, I have my co-host, Miss Christy Barker, in the house. I made it. Thank you, Brian. Welcome back from your trip. Thank you, thank you. It was a lot of fun, yeah. and I don't get to say that after most tournaments, so <laughs> <laughs> it, it was one of those drives home where I was so exhausted, uh, but felt just kind of amazing at yeah. the same time, yeah. and uh, I didn't shit the bed, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Such I'm a sad. good feeling. Yes. <laughs> Clean sheets. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> I love it. Yeah, so uh, today we're going to do our 10 from the weekend. Yep. We're going to recap the uh, the Cary, the Raleigh PPA event. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the exact, what was it called? I don't know. Is it the North Carolina oh, Cup? Gotcha. North Carolina Cup, I believe. But this was PPA North Carolina in Cary, North Carolina, as you mentioned. I think I've got it right here on standby. Oh, good. I'm little, glad. Yeah, don't you worry. We're going to get it right. As, as the commenters say out there, the, the male host is never prepared. <laughs> well, here I am not prepared. Uh, PPA Tour, North Carolina Cup. Okay. So yeah. no special no name special. or anything. Next week, we'll have the Veolia Houston Open. So okay. that will have a, a, a special name. But this one is the North Carolina Cup. I like it. Yep. Well, so I think number one, I just want to mm -hmm. go through and recap my first PPA experience mm -hmm. in the last one I played was the DC PPA. Okay. So what was that? October of 22? Yes. Maybe it's been so it's easily been 18 minute. months. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was super excited to, to get down and pump that we had two events really close by. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got the one in Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. It's coming up in September. It was supposed to happen a month ago. Mm -hmm. uh, they rescheduled it. Yeah. And then the the Raleigh one that we just happened this past weekend. Mm -hmm. So drove down. Um, number one, shout out to Tesla. You make an amazing vehicle. <laughs> and uh, all I did was click autopilot and let that mm -hmm. bad boy drive me the whole way. It was super chill. Uh, I love it. <laughs> that would not make me chill. That makes me nerve wracked. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't it, like it. <laughs> it's so good, Christy. I'm telling you, the car drives way better than me. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want any part of those self-driving cars. <laughs> well, as, as a matter of fact, oh, I was no, so good. exhausted on the way mm -hmm. home. God, people are going to just murder me in the uh. comments for this, but I'll admit it. I was exhausted. I leaned my seat back, oh put it on gosh. auto drive. I was still watching, mm -hmm. but sure. like, uh -huh. I was <laughs> relaxing on the way Yeah, home. get them in the comments, please. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> I'm glad you're home safely. Yeah. That's Amen. Yes, it was either that or uh, my kids get paid on a lot of life insurance. So either way, it's a win. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We're glad you're hope safe. Thanks. <laughs> so, uh, so I get down there um, Friday. Mm -hmm. We don't play until Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, our call time was 11 o'clock, which was absolute perfection. Mm -hmm. So don't That's have to wait time. around all day. Yeah. Don't have to wake up early. Mm -hmm. Like woke up. Um, so I got into town, played golf with my boy, get loose. Mm -hmm. So we played a course there and... Um, as usual, I hit the ball really well. I couldn't putt. Mm -hmm. So shot 89 uh -huh. and uh, barely scraped under 90, but that felt good. And then mm -hmm. I met up with my partner. Shout out to Matt George. Mm -hmm. You are the man, dude. And I'll tell you guys why here in a second. Um, so Matt set us up with some games at the uh, venue. So I drove over to the event. There were a bunch of open courts. So we just played um, a couple of guys that were in the 5-0 division. And then we played uh, a match against some guys that were on our division. Okay. Uh, and mm -hmm. held really well. I don't. I think we lost like a game awesome. during that. So okay. it was like, okay, we're playing guys in the better division. We're hanging with them and or beating them. So that's a mm -hmm. win. Made us feel good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we played guys in our division and beat up on them real bad. So it was awesome. like, okay. I went home, uh, treated mm -hmm. myself to a little Chick-fil-A chocolate shake. It mm -hmm. was amazing. Mm -hmm. All right. And just went to bed early. Um, got up. But... Got into our first match of the day. Okay. And I don't ever look people up. And, okay. and I was excited about this event because, as we've talked about, events around here, you look through the draw and you see all your friends. Mm -hmm. You're like, all right, they know my game. I know theirs. Right. So no one knew who I was. I didn't know who they were. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to look them up because I just want to walk in and go, let's play my best today. Mm -hmm. Let's play my absolute Good. best mm -hmm. and, and do well and see how I fare. Right. Um, so we, we played against these two Indian guys. Um they were pretty good, but I could tell within the first game or so that we should beat them. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. we um, we got out to a big, heavy lead. Mm -hmm. And then I do my normal thing. And this is where I need therapist Christy <laughs> in my life. It's like, why do I get tight? Right. I mean, we're winning. I know we're supposed to win. We're the better mm -hmm. team. I could feel mm -hmm. it the whole time. But I get tight. Right. And I start giving some points back to these guys. And we ended mm -hmm. up winning that one like 11-8, 11-9. Okay. Pulled it out. It, we did pull it out, mm -hmm. but it didn't feel good. Yeah. All right. And then the second game, mm -hmm. we do the, we flip sides. We get way up on them, mm -hmm. gave the whole thing back, let them win a game. 
Wow. Okay. And, and it's all on me. Mm-hmm. And and Matt is being as cool as he can be. Mm-hmm. There were a couple of eye rolls. There were a couple like, all right. He looked at me like, <laughs> are you okay? Right. And I needed to take some time Man. out. So just like catch my breath. I literally was <sighs> this close to like hyperventilating oh, at points during the match. It was like a mental game for yeah, you. Yeah. It was, it mm-hmm. really was like all in my head and I was mm-hmm. having a hard time just blocking drives. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I've always kind of dealt with Mm -hmm. like even when I played competitive golf back in high school Mm -hmm. like I could show up for the rec games and play great and Mm -hmm. then you get in the tournament and you get mental yeah all right so it's kind of carried over into pickleball um but it it felt really good to uh number one get out there Mm -hmm. and and try to fight through the nerves again so long story short we get way up on these guys give the second game to them okay have to flip around and then (laughs) I'm like we we have to win so we get Mm -hmm. way up in the third game Mm -hmm. again I think we were up like eight one eight two okay and then proceed to give them back all the points tied at eight eight Mm -hmm. all right and and it's all on me and Mm -hmm. at this point matt's going did i make a horrible decision (laughs) like i'm never playing a tournament Mm -hmm. and what's awful is in these moments and and i'm being very transparent with you guys so Mm -hmm. hopefully you guys won't murder me too bad but Mm -hmm. in these moments yeah (laughs) Uh, i just wonder like is he thinking I'll never play with this guy again? He's terrible. Mm-hmm. And and I started thinking about I did this to my partner. He's paid mm-hmm. money. You know, it's like all these thoughts that yeah. shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is tough because when you're thinking that in the middle of a game, it's yeah. only going to make your play go down farther. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So we somehow squeaked out a win on these guys. Uh, I managed to pull it together and we beat them, I think, 11-8 or 11-9 or something mm-hmm. like that. So actually, I think it was 12-10. Mm-hmm. Um so close match. We should have pounded them, but Brian played really tight. Uh, we felt great to get through it and ended up playing the team that I guess was ranked highest because they were the only team that got a buy. Okay. So our side of the bracket was, um, I think, the harder side okay. of it after the fact. Um, so we play these guys. Um, Albert is one of them, and I think Ben is the other guy. Mm-hmm. Uh they, they kind of whip us the first game. Okay. And the first one is inside, second one's outside. So mm-hmm. we're trying to get adjusted to the light. <laughs> and uh, That's a tough mid-match move. Yeah, and they beat us 11-5. And I can tell by the look on the face of these guys that they're like, we got this. We mm-hmm. get all day long, mm-hmm. all day. And uh, at that point, I go, I'm going to, I am going to go down swinging. Mm-hmm. There is no way I'm going to lose mm-hmm. and hit drop shots right. and try to play a game that's not necessarily mine. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started hitting a lot of drives. Okay. Um, they ended up being quite effective. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we isolated the the one guy that, so one of the guys was a big dude mm-hmm. and he played with a gearbox power or an 002. He was switching paddles in the middle of the match. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Don't Depending see that on, no, you really don't. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, but either way, his drives, he hit the ball so hard. So we were trying to keep him away from the thirds and just make the other guy play. Mm-hmm. And we did a really good job of that. Um, and ended up getting way ahead on, on him. I think we were up like eight oh or nine oh mm-hmm. and then the look in their eyes just completely changed at that point and we had all the momentum i was like mm-hmm. all right that's good right um we gave them some points back we ended up beating them like 11 5 in the second okay all right and then flipped it and and used that strategy to get through them ended up winning awesome. in game three mm-hmm. it was awesome and it, it felt really good because both those guys duper after the fact i looked them up mm-hmm. one was like a four nine one was like a five one right it's like, right. points. Yep. it's like it, pac-man i love it just yeah and then we faced our, our third match uh which were the guys who ended up winning gold okay it was our only loss of the day uh and what really sucked is i was still feeling a little tight but I played well. Okay. We both played well mm-hmm. and um, had some moments. I mean, it's pickleball. Mm-hmm. But took them to game to three games. We were one of the, I think we're the only team who took them to three games. They okay. beat everybody else in two. Okay. And at the turn in game three, we were up six to two. Okay. And so. That's a stellar tournament. It was good. Yeah. And, but I was so mad. It was like <laughs> we were up six to two at the turn. They ended up beating us 11-8. So we right. can only get two more points after the fact. Right. And, um, you know, but those guys were really solid. One of the guys was just outstanding at the net. It was like, mm-hmm. keep it away. From, his hands are so fast. He hits the ball really hard. Um, and so we were trying to pick on the other guy. We were very effective in doing that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, just couldn't pull it out. So. Gotcha. Got pushed back, and then um, when we got to, the, we had to beat another team, which were older guys. We should have beaten them, mm-hmm. um, and so that was cool. 
and then the bronze medal match uh, were two guys that I've heard of out of North Carolina and South Carolina. Uh, they were so exhausted. Like Matt and I were uh, both so exhausted mm -hmm. that we're like, all right, just pull it together for one more match. Uh -huh. And so we get there and come to find out, we thought we were playing one game to 15. They're like, no, this is two out of three, buddy. You got to play three games. And all so right. we're like, oh, and, <laughs> and the one guy goes, and this is really telling. He's like, can we just play to 15? Mm -hmm. You know, and there's like right. and referees standing there going, nope, no, that's, that's not, not what, what we're doing. That's not what the format is. Yep. All right. So. Mm -hmm. We get into the match. They're both very good. It was kind of a tight match, but one of the guys just looked like a zombie. Mm -hmm. Like he was standing there with his arms hanging in between points. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at Matt and I was like, that's our guy. Mm -hmm. Like just pounded at him. And yeah. so we ended up beating him in two, got bronze. It was a great day. And, Congratulations. Uh, yeah, it felt really good. That's awesome. Felt good to get results after starting so horrifically. I thought it was going to be another tragic Brian Green tournament mm -hmm. where I just cry and all the way home. Not. But thank God. Yes. It was not. You prevailed. Yeah, winning. <laughs> and I think you had a very relatable tournament experience in that a lot of people ride that roller coaster when they play. You mm -hmm. know, they have some ups and some downs. Rarely do I think people go into a tournament and have uh, just a highlight real day. You yeah. know, I mean, it comes with some some hardships along the way. So kudos to you for prevailing and keeping your mental toughness there. Well, it's I hard appreciate to do. it. No, I appreciate it. And it, it felt good to fight through. It, I was mentally exhausted at the end mm -hmm. of the day from just fighting with myself yeah. all day, mm -hmm. all day long. Right. And just believing that you can win, believing you hit the shots you know you can hit. Right. Yeah. So it was wild. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> so thank That's you. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And you got a pretty medal. I like it. It's got the Wright Brothers playing on it. And That's awesome. Me growing up in North Carolina, it meant a little more to get one of those. That's so. awesome. Um, so that was number one. Cool. I love it. Yes. That's number two. One. Number two. We had a bunch of people show up. We had a ton of local people show up. And I think one of the cool things that Brian allows us to do here on the Pickle Pulse is really keep a pulse read of our local Northern Virginia folks or those people in the DMV area. So I think it's so cool. We have such a long list of people to shout out from this tournament. So yep. take so, it away. Yeah. Well, and I'll, I'll let you shout out a bunch of them. I think mm -hmm. the, the first guy that we should shout out is my boy, James Broker. Mm -hmm. uh, James played in the pro singles qualifier and the pro doubles qualifier. He mm -hmm. just barely missed singles getting in, mm -hmm. uh, but qualified doubles mm -hmm. and ended up playing Jack Sock and Colin Schick. And what a first round draw. It was awesome. <laughs> it was so awesome. They were on center court mm -hmm. and uh, it was, it was live stream. So we all got to watch it and had a little party back here. Yeah. Just rooting him on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he did really well. Matter of fact, I he just, did. just had him on before this mm -hmm. and uh, we kind of talked through his whole weekend and I'll drop that a couple of days after I drop this pod. Awesome. So you guys look forward to that. You'll hear his take on the whole mm -hmm. pro draw, how he yeah. felt, what he did, et cetera, et cetera. That's awesome. I can't wait to listen to that one yep and I want to talk to him on the side because I'm curious about just like you know his his confidence I think is one thing that's amazing to me Be, and he should have the confidence that he has but I'm curious does he ever get rattled like was he nervous walking Dude, into that match he was like, very transparent I'm not yeah? gonna leak it all okay. but he was very transparent with uh -huh. me about how okay. he felt and I I appreciated that okay yeah. I like it I'm looking forward to it yeah cool. so really good so, good job James who else do we want to shout out we, we have a long list of people to shout out. So I'll kind of run down the list. We've got Sarah Hua and Taylor Garcia, who um, are both from the Northern Virginia area, mm -hmm. who unfortunately ended up facing each other in the first round of uh, pro women singles, right? They went to three games. It actually got interrupted in the third game because of weather, um, which I think worked to Taylor's advantage. So I have a little beef with this. Yeah. And that is like, it looked like the tides were turning. Sarah was coming back Sarah and hitting coming really back. good shots. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden there was like a, a mist or a a slight yeah. sprinkle going on the whole time mm -hmm. but as soon as the tides turn I mm -hmm. mean Taylor's smart player yep and she goes you know what it's too wet now yep can't play right right and, and it could have been like just playing devil's advocate it might have been unsafe conditions like they, they shouldn't play in condition they don't want to play in but I, I think a lot of people thought the same thing that you're thinking of okay it's a convenient time to stop this match in the third with Sarah with the momentum yep. they had to switch their location completely went indoors and that's a completely different game to get used to so 100%. yeah but that was really cool to see the two of them on center court yeah which by the way I just want to pause and say something about weather I think it's so interesting that PPA is doing east coast or East Coast tournaments at weird times of the year. So we were going to do Virginia Beach in March. Yeah. We did North Carolina in April. We did DC in October. Like, 
PPA, come to us when it's summertime. Yeah, and I promise it'll beautiful. be nicer. Yeah. Exactly. I was just saying, you do Virginia Beach and North Carolina and D.C. in May, June, and July, and it'll be great. Yep. But <laughs> I mean, uh, on the saying. positive side, <laughs> at least they're bringing tournaments here, and it's not all Touché. West Coast, right? Touché. Because I feel like in the past, it's there's been nothing close. Yeah. Well, I'm scared that they won't keep coming back, like that they won't continue to do North Carolina or DC if the weather is going to be like this. I should, DC was fine when they came. Yeah. Um, but Virginia Beach in March would have been a really tricky one to have. That and the weather tough. played a factor here in North Carolina. So I'm just doing a side note, PPA come to us in the summer months yeah. and it'll be great. So yeah. Just putting a plug there. Anyways, <laughs> continuing on. Um, so we had Sarah, we had Taylor, um, we had Nick Zalasco and Alex Guy who were in the pro mm -hmm. uh, men's draws. Alex Guy and Audrey Bonata made it out of mixed qualifiers and into the first round of pro mixed doubles. Our local girl, Alex Trong, had a huge partnership with Colin Johns, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, they ended Colin up- Colin actually won a game in mixed. Yes, Colin won a game in mixed. Let's go, Colin. I know, it's I'm, awesome. I'm putting that on Alex. That was all you, girl. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> actually defeated uh, Lauren Stratman and Rafa Hewitt. Okay. And then the loss that they had was to Thomas and Vivian. I mean, Hold on. I, that's I, a big- I'm big telling game. on myself here, Okay. but I, I didn't see that match yet. I mm -hmm. will go back and watch it. Yeah, uh, the Lauren and Lauren Rafa. Lauren and Rafa? Mm -hmm. where, where where is uh, Mr. Andiamo, her boyfriend? So I actually don't remember who Julian played with. I'd have to look it up. They Have they pickle split? I, I don't know. That's a good question. You know, I've been calling for this all year. Yeah. Lauren's not there playing very well. And Julian, if he had a good girl partner, then yeah. I think he'd do much better. Right. Be curious. Be very interesting. Hmm. Hmm. So, so Julian, yep. Lauren, you want to come on the pod and talk about it? <laughs> we got Therapist Chris before you. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm ready. Um, so that was really cool of our local girl, Alex Trong. Um, Sarah Hua played women's with Allison Phillips. Um, their first round went to, to three games in the first round. Um, this was a big local one. Audrey Bonata and Sari, Sarah Ansbury. Biggest partner. upset of pickleball history. Biggest upset. <laughs> they uh, defeated our number two seed, Rachel Rohrabacher and Anna Bright. Um, and this was, uh, I can't remember in which round. I actually believe it was quarterfinals. Yes. <clears throat> so I, that's just a huge win for Audrey. And that's a match you can go back and watch. It's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, Audrey and Sarah could not miss. Yeah. They didn't miss. I'm talking mostly with their defensive game. I mean, the resets and the dinking, I mean, they were able to get themselves up to the kitchen line really well to mm -hmm. produce some offense. And even in those instances where they were kept on their heels on defense, they just, they reset everything. It was unbelievable. And which is hard to do on a regular day with the power that's coming from the other side of the net, but especially in the wind, yes. um, in, you know, in tricky conditions, it was just unbelievable how they played. Great job. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really nice, Audrey. And uh, also like, mm -hmm. I mean, you're getting to play with Ansbury. That's a pickleball OG right yeah, there. So that's I mean, awesome. that was a cool partnership. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, congrats to your boys who completely mm -hmm. dominated yeah. the junior division. And I think AJ did well in five Oh singles mm -hmm. too. Yep. So, I mean, just awesome. Really, yeah, really good. Really cool. And I'm excited to see what her boys do in the coming years. Yeah. And uh, how many of those juniors are coming up. It was so cool to be at the tournament mm -hmm. and see these little guys. And I mean, there were like six, seven, eight year olds out mm -hmm. there playing at yeah. one point. And it was mm -hmm. like, holy cow, they're so cute. Number one, but number right. two, they're good. Yeah. It's like, pretty cool. Yeah. The, so. the, the future is bright. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, so that's what I got for our, our local people to shout out. So we're keeping a pulse read on our, our local pickleball people. And we are so proud of you. We're, we're cheering you on all the time. Andrew Wang and Rumi as well yeah, did pro qualifier. Just pro so qualifies. we don't forget anyone. Yes. I was about to say, if we forgot someone, please shout us out. But yep. uh, Rumi mm -hmm. and Andrew went down. They yeah. didn't quite make it. They didn't this time. But they they have they're they're doing very well together this is i think maybe their second or third yeah. pro run this year and they have had some stellar matches so, so they are going to break guys. through yeah you will break yeah. through we're we're cheering for you cool all right number three all right augie guh yes i and i is did i say that right is it guh it's, is guh. It, it's we kept saying gee but it's we guh. it's guh yes. all right thank you yes so augie mm. guh takes silver mm -hmm. all right so he's like He's made deep runs, deep runs, deep runs. Yeah. Finally gets a partnership with yeah. with Yame Martinez Vic. Yeah. And 
dude, what a great partnership. They played cool. really well together. They played, played stellar. So just to kind of walk you through the day that they had, um, they defeated first um, Matt Wright and James Ignatowicz in the round of 16. So I shouldn't say first, but as their day progressed, they defeated Matt Wright, James Ignatowicz. Then they took on Callan Dawson and Hayden Patrickwin. Okay. Defeated them. That's your nine seed. Then they took on the three seed, Federico um, and Pablo Tellez. And that wow. led them to the gold medal match. So and they the literally started. had to go through the number two and number three guys basically they, to get there. They, we're right in Ignatovich mm-hmm. too. Um, they were. Right, yep, exactly right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. What a run. Heck of a day. And so now Augie, I mean, we talked about him. He was drafted to Premier mm-hmm. and he was one of the fourth round, what they would call flyers. But at this point, he's not looking so much like a flyer. He looks like a guy that really right. belongs and could make a huge difference on his team yeah, this absolutely. year. Absolutely. No, nope. and Dallas is, he's on the Dallas team, yep. Dallas Pickleball Club. And that is one of the teams that I am watching. Yeah. Especially yeah, yeah. because of their single strength, the four of them together. I so. think we both put those in like top yeah. four. Yeah. At, uh, really good. Last. So, yeah, I, I yeah, like it. Watch that one. Good job, Augie. Uh, Anna Lee and Ben win their first Triple Crowns of the year. So that would mm-hmm. be number three. Yes. Yep. Um, So Ben Johns, I know we've talked about him a lot this year and we've done our predictions of how many triple crowns he will get. And I think I chose four. Mm -hmm. And so you went over that. Yes. Here we are in mid April and we have one. One. So we're going to kind of keep track of that throughout the year. Um, Ben Johns is still um, undisputed, you know, best in the game, of course, but we're watching some others and I'm really excited for Ben that he got a triple crown again this year. Well, I look, Ben is definitely the goat. Mm -hmm. He'll go down Mm -hmm. as it for, He's the Tom Brady. Yes. Right now. Um, but there's so much competition on the men's side. Again, that I just think it's going to be really, really tough. I mm-hmm. do think he'll get four triple crowns, though. I think I mean, so. We'll, we'll see. I, I felt like the over-under was there. I think so. So kudos to, to Ben. And, uh, and Anna Lee with a, another triple crown just continued yeah. to assert her dominance after a, a rough couple of tournaments. So yeah. it's cool to see her bounce back as well. That's awesome. And it's weird saying Anna Lee and bounce back. Right. Yeah, series. sure. Like, are you kidding it's me? Such a minor hiccup in yeah. the grand scheme of things. Yeah. With which the reputation and the resume that she holds, of course. That's it. And but, then, well, go ahead. I was going to say something I wanted to circle back on. This is from an earlier pod. I know one of our earlier podcasts, we talk about how do you find out who, where are people ranked today? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was actually exploring that earlier. Um, the PPA website, I know one of our comment, our listeners had mentioned that in the comments. You can literally go to the PPA website and just look at where rankings are. So they actually have a ranking overall, um, and that is a ranking from the last 52 weeks to okay. date. So that's one ranking that they have. They have a secondary ranking. It's like a race rank, and that means from the start of the calendar year to now. Oh, wow. So interestingly, Ben Johns is number one for singles, um, and everybody's kind of where you expect the them to be. For the 52 weeks. For the 52 weeks, Ben yes. Johns is number one in singles. Um, for the race, Federico is number one. He's, so from the calendar year starting to now. So I think it's just something interesting to pay attention to. I'm curious how that is going to go as the year. Has Federico, progresses. he's missed the finals in what, one tournament? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. In singles? Uh, I'll go back and I'll double check. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's not many. Mm-hmm. And he's been killing it on yeah. the single size. Plus, yeah. he and Pablo have been doing well in doubles as well, mm-hmm. for the most part. So. Very much so. So if you're curious where people stand today, you can go look on the PPA website. It was really cool to see and just kind of compare. Um, and like I said, most people are where you would expect them to are where they, you would expect them to be. So just something interesting to keep but our eyes I got to imagine for the race this year, it'd be a little different look. There's some mm-hmm. new names on there and some guys that are mm-hmm. making a splash. So it's, right. it's very cool. Right. Well, and I think our, our MLP draft showed us that too. Like yeah. things are getting shaken up a little bit. So oh, it's yeah. kind of cool to see. All right. Number five, mm-hmm. Anna Lee wins her hundredth title. And there was a huge celebration. Uh, her whole family was there. Mm-hmm. And they brought out some special, uh, I don't even know what it was. It looked like a triple crown trophy. It did. It literally had crowns yeah. in it. I mean, it, cool. it was wild. And yeah. so, and I heard on another pod, mm-hmm. they were like, so Ben, will he get to 200 titles? He was first mm-hmm. to get to 100, right? Mm-hmm. Anna Lee's second. Um, but he's 25. Mm-hmm. Anna Lee is... 17? 17. Yeah, okay. With so, 100 to her name. With 100 to her name. Mm-hmm. So can Ben get to 200 titles? Mm-hmm. And then I think Anna Lee might be able to get to 300. Right. I, you might be going past that. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I She has no ceiling. She's mm-hmm. only 17. <laughs> we double her age. She's 34. She's still going to be at the top of her game. You know, like 
I just, I, I, she's amazing. Yeah. This is just unheard of. Like, I don't know of other sports where this is happening. So my question would be, mm-hmm. and I'm always devil's advocate here, mm-hmm. is okay. that like the, the boys have caught up, right? There's okay. a bunch of men mm-hmm. who are really pushing the top guys at this point. Yeah. And after this year, I think the girls will have caught up too. To Annalie? Well, not, not so much all the way to her, mm-hmm. but meaning there's going to be a lot more competition. There's a mm-hmm. lot of really quality female players out right. there that are playing qualifiers that are making splashes. I agree. And, and practicing and putting in the work. And mm-hmm. so I think 2025, mm-hmm. you know, if the tides turn, will she continue at this rate of winning? Yeah. I, I think it's yes. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I think people are going to catch up and make it much harder. Just like, you know, right. if Push it were harder. 2023, mm-hmm. we would laugh at four triple crown mm-hmm. wins for Ben. But since it's 2024, Seems a little more difficult this year That's for him, right? Take. So as yeah. time moves on, I think the girls will catch up. But I do I still that. think that she can get to 300 because you're right. Time is on her side. Right. Well, and I, um, Ben John's number one to Federico number two. I think there's a smaller gap f- there than from Anna Lee number one, Catherine number two. Yeah. I think there's a bigger gap. For sure. Um, and there are days that I think the gap is getting bigger. Like we would expect it to get smaller, but I feel like the gap is getting bigger. And I know commentators are saying the same thing. Pe- you know, people who are analyzing this sport are saying the same thing. I mean, I just, she doesn't have a ceiling. That's what I'm maintaining. <laughs> like, I just can't <laughs> wait to see her in several years. Cause you're 17 with a hundred titles. It's just amazing. Yeah. She deserves all the celebration. Oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. And super stoked for her and for mm-hmm. Lee and the whole yeah. family. It was, it was a cool little scene. They took pictures mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah, liked it very much. Yeah. All right. Number six, Tyson McGuffin and Deckel Barr mm-hmm. make a solid run mm-hmm. after Tyson acted like a complete and total baby this week. You think he acted like a baby? All right. Well, look, I don't think it was a so baby. I'm, I'm a fan of KOTC. If you guys don't watch that pod, you should mm-hmm. definitely watch it. There's mm-hmm. a lot of behind the scenes knowledge. Okay. Uh, or at least they claim to have a lot of knowledge, mm-hmm. uh, which I think they do because Tyler's a top pro. Mm-hmm. So he gets Makes him in. Sense. Checks out. Yep. <laughs> Uh, so that's Tyler Lung and that's uh, Jimmy Miller. Mm-hmm. Um, what was I talking about? Jeez, I just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. We're talking about, uh, you said Tyson acting like a baby. Oh, and I said, go. no, he's not. Yes, yes. <laughs> See, I, I have moments. Um, but it, it looked like Tyler sent a text mm-hmm. out to Tyson going, hey, I will play with you. We mm-hmm. can make a good team. Let's let bygones be bygones. And let's be honest, mm-hmm. what Tyler did was not that egregious. He made a mm-hmm. comment about mm-hmm. his wife. Mm-hmm carrying bags in an airport while Tyson wasn't carrying anything. Mm -hmm. Right. So he, he found that amusing. I would too, Mm -hmm. as a husband, my wife is not carrying anything in an airport. Mm -hmm. Um, and if she was, then you can make fun of me if I'm walking around, like (laughs) that's not that bad. Right. So long story short, he just said, let's play together. Mm -hmm. Tyson refused Mm -hmm. and created a lot of drama. And, uh, at managed to work, get a trade together, which I didn't think was going to happen. Right. I really thought that the Utah Black Diamonds were just going to implode before mm-hmm. the whole season, before right. they even played a match. Um, so there has been a trade. Yes. And that is uh, Jay DeVillier mm-hmm. is going over to Utah. Mm-hmm. And Tyson McGuffin is going over to Jay's team. Do you remember which team that was? Orlando. Orlando Squeeze. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So Tyson actually lucked into a good team. Mm-hmm. Um, Jay DeVillier goes over and then Orlando paid Utah fifty thousand dollars right all right Mm -hmm. which is crazy because that takes utah down from 480 spent to 430 (laughs) (laughs) they're already the lowest so Mm -hmm. good for them for being great stewards of their money let's see (laughs) if their team can pull out some some wins yeah Right. I, I, I hope so for Alex's sake. Like Me again, too. we're all cheering our local girl, Alex on who's, who's on the Utah black diamond. So no, I love it. Yeah. So we'll do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, furthermore, Deckel is like continuing to solidify himself this year as a, a, a solid top I five to Deckel. 10 player. I mean, he's been around for a while, yeah. but he disappeared for a bit mm-hmm. and now he's back. Cause he made a run with Tina Pisnik as well. He did. Yeah. Is that our next one? No, no, that no, was no. part of, that okay. was also five. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Tina Pisnik mm-hmm. is an up and coming player. She She's yeah. really good. She made a name for herself in MLP, MLP mm-hmm. if I'm remembering correctly. Mm-hmm. Uh, was just drafted Premier mm-hmm. uh, much earlier than before. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think, you know, the two of them played really, really well. And 
I'm interested to see what she has for the rest of the year, but Deckel's a beast. Yeah. So yeah, to talk about the the run that Tina Pisnik and Deckel Barr had, um, they made it to the gold medal match uh, for mixed this weekend. Um, they defeated number 21 seed Colin Schick and Brooke Buckner. They went on to defeat the four seed Tyson McGuffin and Megan Dijon. Then the six seed Jack Sock and Catherine Parento. And then finally the 22 seed Todd Fott and Mary Bra- Maggie Brasha, who came out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Um, that was pretty cool yep. um, to get to the gold medal match and play against Ben and Annalie for gold. So yeah. great run. So the interesting thing, Fought and, and Brasha too mm-hmm. had to play against Hayden, mm-hmm. uh, who was uh, Brasha's partner before mm-hmm. she traded him in for Fought, or at <laughs> least for this tournament. So uh-huh. it was interesting that they won. Yeah. I wonder how he felt yeah. about that whole situation. I love the different pairings. Yes. Mm-hmm. But as a DC pickleball, like, live or die fan <laughs> at this point, we uh-huh. have Deckel Bar, and I'm stoked about mm-hmm. it. Let's go. Get the big man. <laughs> <laughs> love it. All right. Number six. Mm-hmm. I can't even say this guy's last name. So we're going to call him Ivan J mm-hmm. and okay. Brandon French. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have heard of Brandon French. He's mm-hmm. had some decent results. He's a great player. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know who Ivan is or if it's Ivan. Mm-hmm. I'm probably butchering it. Mm-hmm. But uh, they had an early round match against who did they play? They were uh, Julian Arnold and Tyler Lung. Mm-hmm. All right. And go back and watch this match. It is hilarious. The, the pickleball is good, mm-hmm. uh, but the chirping is better. And <laughs> <laughs> that the whole time they're chirping back and forth at each other, like not today, not there. <laughs> and at one point, like someone misses a shot and, uh, and French looks at him and he goes, that's our guy. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you want an entertaining match to go see, mm-hmm. I, I think that match. would be one of the better ones from the weekend. That's Definitely awesome. fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I haven't seen that one, so I'll have to check it out. All right. So that was seven. Let's mm-hmm. go number eight. Okay. Our boy JMA. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So I didn't shout JMA out in our local, you know, our local segment here at the number one or number two. He needed because his own spot. He needed his own spot. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I did not forget you, JMA. Yes. Um, yeah. And for you don't know who JMA is, mm-hmm. Jonathan Medina Alvarez. We've talked mm-hmm. about him in the past. Yes. He's out of Richmond. Mm-hmm. He plays, uh, he's the teaching pro and pro at Performance Pickleball. Yes. With mm-hmm. our with our girl, Christina Shiflett. Mm-hmm. Shout out to her. We love yes. you as well. Absolutely. Um, and JMA has really emerged as a great singles player he can play doubles too of course but singles is really his event um so he had a great run this weekend he defeated number 22 tyler lung then took care of number 11 jack sock then number six jaume martinez vic which is a big win because mm-hmm. jaume has had quite some runs in singles as well they're all good wins but that that one particularly sticks out to me and then he finally lost to the number four seed connor garnett in the quarterfinals dude what a sick run it's a great run and he was the 43 seed let's go yeah so i I don't know if JMA watches. I hope he mm-hmm. does, but flex on him, big dog. Yeah. Flex on him because, hey, do you know that he's 42 years old competing with these 20-year-old guys yep. too? So in shape. Yeah. I felt so bad. I was watching him at Upshot playing, and I sat there with a pizza in my lap watching him play, <laughs> and I'm like, man, no, <laughs> I need I, to ditch the pizza. And he did say something to us afterwards, and he gave me some very good uh, nutritional advice. So oh, thank you, JMA, nice. and I will follow that because, yeah, he looks great. Yeah. <laughs> he is in shape. <laughs> he really does. And I've seen him play twice in person, and mm-hmm. he, like, glides like a gazelle across the court. Mm-hmm. It's very impressive. Yeah. When you see a guy that's just so fast, I mean, mm-hmm. he's broker fast fast at double broker's age. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's awesome. He's put in the work. Yeah. yeah. And that's on and off the court. Like, I'm not kidding you. When, when I say nutrition is important, um, he, he makes it a part of his daily routine to be really on, on point with what he eats, what he ingests, how he sleeps. Like he's like a whole person, Okay, <laughs> meaning, or I should say training the whole person, if you will. And then he'll spend hours on the pickleball court as well. Oh, so really cool. Cool little side nugget for that. While we're mm-hmm. talking about nutrition, mm-hmm. I um, actually heard back from that pickleball trainer mm-hmm. today okay. he's out of florida he trains a lot of the top pros okay and uh, i think he's going to come on in the next week or two oh, cool. so if you're interested in nutrition you're interested in fitness you're interested mm-hmm. in how to get better mm-hmm. that'll definitely be one to come to, awesome. to watch and yeah. it'll be coming out in the next a uh, week or two or three i gotta nail down an exact time but i'm excited because awesome. he's the man he works with a lot of top That's guys awesome. i will eat all the pizza before that pod because then <laughs> i won't want to eat it after yeah got it <laughs> noted uh, so jma hey we love you good mm-hmm. work buddy yeah um number nine 
Jeannie Bouchard gets her first W. <laughs> she got some W's in both singles and in mixed. Yes. Um, so Jeannie Bouchard, she defeated Lauren Stratman. Um, that was her singles win. And then also got a mixed win against Steve Deacon and Michelle Ex- Escavel. Okay. Um, so pretty cool for her. And we can continue to watch her progress. Yeah. yeah. No, that is that is very mm-hmm. cool. Uh, I'm rooting mm-hmm. for her. It actually seems like uh, she's into it. Mm-hmm. Like after she beat Lauren, she was really ecstatic she was mm-hmm. and i mean she's won like huge tennis tournaments right right it's so i cool. thought that was pretty cool the other mm-hmm. thing is like what is going on with lauren stratman right now i know i've been dogging mm-hmm. her this year and she hasn't yeah. been playing that well she's mm-hmm. a great player i don't want to take anything away from she's her she's a great player because i would say she's like consistently getting to quarterfinals yeah <clears throat> that's not bad <laughs> like <laughs> we talk like it's not great but it's really it's it's not bad i mean the it is getting crowded on the pro tour mm-hmm. most of the time you're seeing the same names every Every now and then you'll see somebody new breakthrough, you know, we'll find a new name and we, we watch that name and kind of see how they go along. But getting to the quarterfinals of a PPA professional tournament is not bad. That no, is great. Hey, I know. I <laughs> so yeah, agree. it's just interesting because I, I imagine as a pro and I, I'm not a pro, so I, I'm just having empathy and trying to put myself in their shoes, but like continuously getting to that point and not breaking through must be really frustrating. It's gotta be. Like she's good. She wants to be, she's hungry for it. She's a professional athlete. Of course she's there to win. So I'm sure she wants to break through. When, as we mentioned, her boyfriend was there, but not playing Mm -hmm. mixed with her, which is kind of weird Mm -hmm. because they always play mixed together. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't know what's going on there, Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully she'll pull it around and have some better results or or make deeper runs. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Number 10. And this one's kind of big. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lucy and Callie split up for the first time in a yeah. long time. What, any inside knowledge there, Chrissy? What's no going on there? Why. No clue why. I have no indicators of the reasoning behind this decision. But yeah, Lucy and Callie, who, like we, you've said, that has consistently played together for a long time. I would venture to say over a year. Yeah. Um, at least for, for 2023, they pa- partnered up. Um, they split up. So Lucy played with Jackie Kawamoto. Callie played with Leia Jansen. Okay. Um, so they... Um, actually lost to the same opponent. They both lost to Hurricane Tyra Black and Paris Todd. Mm -hmm. So they have the same loss on their record with the split. So there's no way to tell, you know, Who's yeah, who's better. done better or what. Right, exactly. That, you know, that's the first conversation that would come to my mind. But i um, curious. I, I don't know the reasoning, but... I actually think it's smart, though. On. I mean, yeah. they've been playing together for a while. They haven't been making deep runs. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they're both very mm-hmm. established pros. Yeah. You know they have the game. Mm-hmm. Um, it just feels like everybody's catching up and surpassing them. So yeah. maybe going a different route with a partner is always nice. Yeah. So kind of a smart Mix move. It up. Yep. I think it comes down to having that conversation about goals and what are we trying to do and we haven't gotten there yet. So do we want to keep trying or do we want to try something different? And they're known for being really good friends off the court. Mm-hmm. So I, I imagine it's probably more of a professional move than a personal one, but total speculation, total assumption. No clue. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> clue. I got nothing. All right. Well, that is our 10 from the weekend. If you've made it this far, we appreciate you very, very much. And uh, if you could, just check out this link I'm going to put down here. That's how you can find me on Instagram, at the Pickle Pulse. And also, if you could just click the subscribe button, click the like, comment, tell me that I'm not smart in my Tesla. Tell me You're congratulations it's for terrifying. a, a the, decent... I'll talk to you after the pod. That's scary. I'm with you. <laughs> yes. Tell me I had a decent uh, run in the PPA. Make me feel good because I feel pretty good. Or make me feel bad if you want to be mean. I don't care. <laughs> uh, until next week. Peace. Sounds good. See you. Bye. <laughs>